This is part two of the LOD lecture. Let's now look at a different case illustrated in this more complex pedigree. We will try to determine whether two loci are linked and then what linkage distance there is between these two. The simplest explanation for the pedigree data is that this is an autosomal condition determined by the dominant D allele. Because the disease is rare, all affected individuals would then be big D, little d. All healthy, little d, little d. We are interested in the possibility that locus M might be linked to D, and we would like to know the genetic map distance between the two. We know the genotype of each family member at the M locus, for which multiple alleles are present. Let's examine all places where the pedigree provides information on this hypothetical linkage. In general, these are all the instances when big D goes through a meiosis. The first is when grandma conceived the affected daughter, illustrated by the red arrow. The affected daughter got alleles little d and m3 from father. Grandma contributed big D and m1, and we are interested in the probability of that event. Another informative event is when grandma conceived the unaffected son, also shown as a red path. The next informative events are when the affected daughter conceived each of her two sons, one healthy, the other affected. The paths are shown in blue. We have no idea what linkage we might have, so we're going to test a bunch of different ones. But here, let's start with a hypothetical linkage distance of 10 map units. And let's also assume that big D and M1 are linked in coupling. We can then calculate the P of each path, 0.45 in each case. Note that we're not concerned with the rest of the family members. We verify that in each case their genotype was such not to generate any confusion, that is, they did not carry the M1 allele. Let's add another informative event. A third child, a girl, displays the condition, but has genotype M3, M4. Following the hypothesis of big D, M1 linkage, this event implies a crossing over with a connected probability of the recombinant chromatid being 0.05. We can now calculate the probability of the whole pedigree, assuming theta equals 0.1, as 0.45 exponent 4 times 0.05 exponent 1 or 0.002. The probability of the whole pedigree assuming theta equals 0.5, it's easy, that is, under no linkage, it is equal to 0.001. You can do the calculation yourself, right? We can now calculate the log of the odds. It is equal to the log of p linked over p unlinked, which for 10 map units is about 0 0.3. What genetic distance between d and m fits the pedigree data best? The distance that gives the highest LOD. In this case, information provided by this pedigree does not yield a particularly strong signal. Disease gene hunters spend a lot of their time looking for large and thus informative pedigrees. To demonstrate this point, I've made an Excel spreadsheet that yields LOD for different situations. The input is the number of parental and recombinant chromatids. In our example, the blue and red events correspond to parental, the violet event to recombinant. For a range of theta, the sheet calculates the cumulative probability of the parental and of the recombinant chromatids, and then the probability of the pedigree. Finally, it calculates the LOD by logging the ratio of linked versus unlinked likelihoods. The LOD score increases with the number of informative events. If, for example, I change my input to 30 and 6, parental and recombinant chromatids respectively, I get an LOD maximum at about 15 map units. 
for 30 and 2, I get a maximum at 5 map units. For 30 and 1, I get a maximum of 2 map units. If I lower my input to 10 parental and 1 recombinant chromatid, my maximum LOD is too low for significance. Let's take the input of 8 and 2 and tabulate the data. Sometimes LOD is called Z to make things slightly more complicated for students. We get, in this case, from very low Z or LOD at near 0 theta to a maximum of 3.2 LOD or Z. Plotting this data, we clearly see that the maximum is at a theta of 0.1, which crosses the significance threshold of 3. So, the best estimate of genetic distance is 10 map unit or a theta of 0.1. In conclusion, we apply our knowledge of probability and linkage to understand the inheritance of genetic markers and of a disease condition in a pedigree. We evaluate the likelihood of a whole pedigree under varying linkage scenarios. Comparing each scenario to the null hypothesis of null linkage enables us to identify the most probable genetic distance between two loci.